Hello and welcome to another video from Alberta Bushcrafter. This is another video in my series on tents. Uh, I know a lot of guys use tarp shelters in the, in the bush and so on, but there's a lot of cases where those aren't terribly practical. In some cases it's you know, going to a state or provincial campsite. Uh, you guys see my video on bad tent design. Uh, this is the same type of tent that is, I'll call it good tent design. I actually researched several and this was one of my favorites. Now you've also seen, I've, I've shown you guys a tunnel tent. They're nice, they're very lightweight, but again, mine succumbed to what you call sticky tent syndrome, which is, well, that's when the polyurethane on the fly degrades. That's actually why it smelled a bit like cat pee as well, because one of the components of polyurethane, of course, is urea, which is, you know, in cat pee. So, there'll be another video when I, if I decide to um, strip the fly and recoat it. But this is a different one altogether. I actually broke down and bought a new tent. Now, a little bit of a rant here. I subscribe to the Canadian Tire Flyer, and I do shop there sometimes. Canadian Tire is an interesting store, and it's, they're all franchised, so there's not a lot of consistency in service. And I have to say, I've cut myself down to about two or three Canadian Tire stores now because the service in other stores has been absolutely abysmal. It's terrible. I mean, they'll list a number of tents on the, on the website. You go there and they can't find them. Uh, it's just, it's amateur. So, shop somewhere else, guys. Really. If, if, you, just, if you want to actually have a happy shopping experience, you might want to skip Canadian Tire altogether because their service is crap. So, after not finding the tent I wanted, it was a Eureka two-person Sierra Pass. Beautiful tent, kind of orange for my liking. I actually settled on this. Thanks to, here's a shout out again to Wholesale Sports. Um, this one goes out to Kelly. And uh, yeah, wonderful job. Let me, almost let me set this tent up in the store. But here we go. This is a North Face Stormbreak tent. It's small, fairly light, it's about five and a half pounds. Now that may change a little. Let me give you a quick look at this first. Nice polyurethane coated stuff sack. It does not have a pole bag, so I'm going to adapt this for the poles. I am a believer in pole sacks for tents because one, you can you can put them in a different part of the pack. You can strap them outside or, or whatever. And secondly, they don't always lay properly across a pack. These ones might though. But here is the tent. And she's a beauty. A couple big things. You hear me talking about poles. These are aluminum poles. And they are shock corded. Excellent design. There are four poles to this tent, not two. So there's actually two small cross poles and two large ones. Eh, let's see if I can get these out. I think we're going to set this up off camera a little bit. One of the other nice things, the pegs do come in a bag. Now, I am not a huge fan of the basic pegs you get. These are just little wire pegs. And unfortunately, if I go to a camping store, I have a fairly new person there. I, I tend to get on my soapbox a bit. But these are just simple little wire pegs. They're okay. They're fairly hard. They do a good job. These are aluminum. And they are a lot lighter. And the thing is, too, this only comes with eight. I checked, and there are about 16 tie-out points on this tent. So, I mean, all over the fly. Main thing, the more tie-outs you have, the more wind stable it's gonna be, and the tighter you can get it to the ground if it's raining. One of the issues with tents that I've seen is the fly does not come quite down to the edge of the floor, and it comes about that high up the floor. And that means if the, if the rain is blowing sideways, it will get you wet. So first thing I'm gonna do, 
16 aluminum pegs. 50 to 75 cents a piece, you can get them cheaper. They're good. Uh, they're a lot easier, they're a little wider, so they're easier on your nylon. Now, what else it comes with? A rudimentary set of directions. Pictures only. Right. The North Face website, by the way, has excellent directions on their tents. Ah, here's the thing. Nice, separate rain fly. This is good. And then, of course, there's the tent body itself. I do tend to like these colors. They blend in a little better. This is not as garish as Blaze Orange. As you can see behind me, it's not too bad for the fall either. Yeah, the other tent I was looking at was a bright, bright orange color. Some people find that they get offended by that. I think there's more trouble, there's more problems than that in the woods than just, oh, someone's got a bright blue tent or a bright orange tent or whatever. That to me is just silly. That's just, that actually, uh, that's kind of the sign of a, well, I wasn't going to, I'm not going to use the word I was going to use, but it starts with A and ends with whole. Anyway, it's kind of the, uh, it's kind of an amateur attitude. It's the attitude of people who spend more time chasing after social causes than they do about actual, do actually spend in the bush. I find it just amazes me a lot. Now, one of the other things it's good to get for your tent, and this is separate, is a footprint. This is basically a nylon ground sheet. This is an extra $40, either direct from North Face or in the stores, didn't matter, it was one cent difference. This actually goes underneath the tent and it will protect the tent. I'd rather replace one of these and get the floor of my tent replaced. So some kind of footprint, and this is very light. This is, uh, oh, I think it's about 300 grams, yeah, three quarters of a pound-ish. These are a great idea because, for one, to keep moisture from coming up in the bottom of your tent, but they also get the, uh, the tent up off the ground. You're more likely to put a hole in the floor of your tent from the top, but you, know, you always look for a good spot to pitch it. I have one right beside me, and that's exactly what we're going to do right away. So the footprint is an option, and it's a good idea. What else? Uh, not much else. So now, pause for a few minutes it will be a little bit darker because it's the afternoon here in early October so I am going to go set this up okay so one thing here while I'm setting up I'm going to show you something neat about shock corded poles aluminum is pretty well essential with a the tent these days but the next thing is here they go do this again they set up easily this is one of the short poles. Another one here. And they go like wildfire. And again, the nice thing about shock corded poles as well, and this is one of the biggest things about new tent design, is that you're not going to drop a pole segment somewhere as well. Okay, one of the nice things I like about the footprint of this tent is you can set it up beforehand. So this is actually the footprint. You can find your, well, closest to ideal spot. And set up the footprint first because the tent will actually hook onto the footprint and the poles will secure it, which is really cool. And one of the other neat things is, hang on a moment, you can see that one of the straps is keyed red and the others are gold so you've got a reference point I find that very handy this is someone put a lot of thought into this tent design so I'm already quite happy so we will continue here and then for step two we'll get the tent laid out which is over to the right there Okay, here's step two. This is the actual tent body. Has been laid over the footprint. And we'll see here, we'll zoom in. It actually shock cords 
over the same peg that you're using for the footprint. The other thing is that grommet. Uh, the, the pole is big enough to go through both of those and makes it very secure. This is actually, I, I do recall at one point my aunt had one of these North Face tents and I used it many, many years ago. And I loved how simple it was to set up. You're going to see next <coughs> exactly what I mean. Because like I said, this is a neat little tent. There's no sleeves to put the, the poles through. And there's a little trick to this tent that's actually a big step up on a lot of other tents of this type. So next step coming up. So the next step is the poles go up. Don't have to worry if they're not completely straight or X because the next step will actually get them done. Uh, this is where the fun begins. This frame just clips right onto the tent. So we'll do that next. Okay, so now you can see But that's how it hooks on. So what I actually like to do, and once again, it just clips on. These are very strong, these clips. So I start, I do two on each side and, you know, then work my way up. And right now, that's a fairly sturdy structure. But now watch. So these... Once you add these two guys, and they're tight to get on. By the way, this is a completely out of the box setup. You could almost call this an unboxing because I've never, ever set this tent up before. I've just set up a lot of tents. Now that is a heck of a lot more sturdy. You notice also with these, if you've got two poles crossing over, it's always good to do it on the top one so it kind of holds the structure together. So at this point, <coughs> at this point, if it was a nice quiet night, this is it. You could just sleep in this right now. Me, I'll probably sleep diagonally. Um, yeah, let's have another look. That's pretty good. Notice, <coughs> notice that the mesh does not go up all the way up the sides. So, yeah, once again, if it was sunny weather, this would be the time to do it. And actually, I made my first mistake, so let's give you a shot. Those little crossbars are actually supposed to go on top. Oops, there we go. So, I have now fixed that. Always a good idea to read the directions, and it's also a very good idea to set your tent up before you actually take it out in the bush. And so that's exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, now, just a quick bit, you can see what sold me on the tent, right there. That is a little Velcro tie-out that attaches right to your frame. A lot of tents don't have them. Now this will actually secure the fly to the frame, meaning that if there's a high wind, the actual aluminum frame is going to hold the weight rather than just the nylon. And that makes a difference between fairly windproof and practically bombproof. So here's the fly partially on there. And we'll continue. The nice thing is the fly is also keyed to that red strap, which believe me today has been quite helpful now here's a closer look at what I meant by that velcro tab uh, I'll just show you quickly you can see that the you'll see that the storm tie out the guy line for the the fly is actually sewn into the same part the velcro is so it's totally secure and here's what it looks like so you see right there is where it ties in. Nice little tab there to pull it out too. And on the other side is the guy line. And that's solidly in there. So let's continue. 
So here we are almost complete. I've just noticed that the eight pegs that come in the tent, that's as far as this goes. So I'm very glad I bought more. Those is the tent's almost set up. It's almost storm proof. There's a few more lines to do and that's about it. You can see it's actually getting pretty bomb proof already. Okay, now I know it's getting a bit dark, but here it is, completely set up, completely staked down. Now, honestly, I think one could actually go and sew a few more stake points into it, both on the fly and on the tent itself, if one knew what they were doing. But the nice thing I like about this tent over all the others I've looked at is right here. Oh, yeah, I had two pegs left over, so that gets me thinking about sewing. Right here is a very generous Velcroed vestibule. Anyways, there it is with the vestibule open. It looks like it just was on the box. The very nice thing about this as well is there's a vestibule on the inside. Sorry, there's a, there's two doors. This is a two-door tent, so you got a door on the front and the back side. It's good if you need to get out the back of the tent in a hurry. Uh, the other nice thing is both sides have a vestibule. So that's room. That, I'd probably put my pack cover on my pack if it went underneath here because I've got a huge external frame pack. There's a good seven and a quarter feet in there. Well, let's see if we can get a little closer. Had a problem with the battery on my camera, so. Well, you can't really see much. You can get around the side here. Nope. Rule to self, or note to self, make sure you set it up where you got more cord. Like I said, my battery dies if I unplug it. Well, let's try it. Okay. So here we are inside the tent. There's a loop there on each corner. Actually, for a gear loft, there's about three and a half, four feet of space in the top of this. It's a very nice tent. And you can see here, there's the other vestibule. And plenty of ventilation. This is a nice little tent. This is just about as comfortable as my old backpacking tent. Maybe a little smaller, but not much. Yeah, and for 170 bucks, this is a good deal. Plus footprint, so 210. Anyway, so that's it. I think this is a great little tent. Um, not a lot of vestibule space, but, well, yeah. It wasn't a $300 tent, so there you go. So, while I was setting up the tent, which you can see, over my right shoulder here, it actually did get uh, not just dark, the sun's gone down, but it's also gotten extremely cloudy, so that's why, hey, there we go. So, time to end this one. I want to thank you guys. That's the, uh, that's the North Face Stormbreak 2 tent. It comes in a four person as well. A little heavier, but beautiful tent. Now, I did not go and buy I mean, if I had the money, I would probably buy one of those four season expedition tents at some point because I camp a lot in the shoulder season and uh, when it gets a lot colder. But this is a good three season tent. It's fairly weatherproof. Yeah. And for 170 bucks, well, 210 with a footprint, can't really go too long, too wrong. Anyway, so thanks for watching. This is the Alberta Bushcrafter channel. My name is Dean. Take care. Good day.